multiple data, multiple models fit the same data. And uh, it is the researcher analyst job to not just find the answer they like, but to test competing, probable, plausible, alternative hypotheses. It's the fundamentals of data analysis. Plausible, alternative, rival explanations. What are the alternative explanations besides the one I like? And if you cannot specify those in advance, um, you shouldn't be starting your analysis until you can say, this is my preferred solution, logical alternatives are this, this, and this, and I'm going to test them all and evaluate them to see which one comes up. You look at the fit, but you have to judge it by theory, right? Each alternative explanation should be theoretically plausible, not just uh, little green men from Mars came down with invisible ray guns and made all the brown kids stupid. That's not a plausible alternative hypothesis, right? So the major alternatives that I want to try and get through and I have a bad feeling that I've put too much here, and we're not going to get through it all, but I hope we'll at least get through the first two, and then we'll worry about this in the afternoon if necessary. Hierarchical, bifactor, are different types of factor structures besides correlated factors. Path models are attempts to show causation using manifest variables, and structural equation models are path models with full factorial structures. So when you try to do that, you need big, 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 big N. So these are alternatives to the correlated model. We're still only just looking at my construct. We're not saying, how does my construct relate to another construct? This is still what we call a measurement model. How am I going to measure my construct? How do I measure this construct? Clearly, we want the goal of simple structure. That this factor explains this, this factor. We don't want this messy world because that's what's already in the data. In the data, everything is correlated with everything and it really just... We're trying to make sense of it, not just say everything's correlated. So. Here's the three major types of models that you should be always considering in your data analysis. The correlated model, A, B, and C exist simultaneously and influence each other, but we don't know where the beginning is, we don't know where the end is. They just correlate. The bifactor model says that two things explain every item common factor, the, everything is about assessment, everything is about mathematics, everything is about how much I love my mother. But there are different facets or sub-factors, we call them unique factors, that also explain. So that these are like, you can think of them as sub-scores. Yes, everything is math, but these ones are the geometry, these ones are the algebra, these ones are the calculations. These ones are the statistics. They're sub-factors within the general. And another way of turning this is to say, well, instead of having the common factor independent, we could make the common factor the explanation in a hierarchical model. Because these are probable and possible, um, we're going to look at how to do it in Lamont. Unfortunately, Jamovi doesn't let us do it unless you know stuff I don't know. So, uh, what's the difference between interpretations of the factor model and hierarchical model? In the bifactor model, the common general factor influences directly the items. In the hierarchical model, the general overarching construct influences the factors, not the items directly. 
Yeah, but this is the picture. But uh, for example, if I want to discuss this model, for example, if I have uh, uh, some math item and I have some general math that influence on statistics, the algebra and calculus. For example, hierarchical model. What is the meaning of this math? I mean, the second order factor. And what is the differences of this meaning between, uh, against the common factor in the bifactor model? The difference is in where and how the general factor relates to the actual manifest variables. What this is saying is it relates to them directly, whereas here, this general thing explains the covariance amongst these correlated factors. It doesn't actually have a direct effect on the items. So it's a uh, further away, it's it's saying, okay, these are correlated, but actually they have the correlations are really high, eight and nine, so I think they have something in common as factors. So the hierarchical is trying to explain the factors, not the items. The factors explain the items. Uh, but can I say that in hierarchical model, first order factor is a kind of component of second order one? What, what? Say that again, please. Uh, that first order factor is a component of the second order one. Oh, yes. What we're saying here is this factor belongs to this big idea. This factor explains these items, but it belongs to this big idea. Whereas here we're saying this big idea explains the items, and this unique factor explains the item. So this explains the factors, which means I would like to see really strong correlations over here on this side. If this was 80 and 90, then maybe this makes sense. And that might be, that's how it works mathematically, but the question is, can you explain that the factor has belongs to something else. And in my student conceptions of assessment, I've created a hierarchical model that says, these two scales have something in common. These two scales have something in common. I, I developed that model before I was aware of this. So you won't have the excuse I did of ignorance. You know that these exist, and you could consider them and test them. Dimitri, did you have a question? I do share with Okay. Well, no, uh, maybe in a different uh, set of work. Could it be that uh, the uh, bifactorial is like the G factor in uh, IQ tests? So you have the different intelligences which are sort of uh, working on their own, and you have these underlying that's, that is exactly the environment in which bifactor models were first specified. The common factor was actually called G, general, and there were facets of general intelligence. And this is more about the scales and subscales. So if I go, for example, on uh, numeracy, I will have the different the components. From the or the difference is. This is trying to explain the first order factors. This is trying to explain the items. So the focus is different. You know, I have an idea that the hierarchical model is uh, more relevant for validation when the bifactor for measuring. Just, just an idea, I don't know how. Validation in what way, sir? Uh, I mean, to group. The uh, data correlates with our theoretical assumptions, so that there are some. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't see it. But maybe I mean that when we have a common factor which are connected to each item, it seems to me that it is easier to measure. Yes. So to to make some one score for for all yeah. items of the test, whereas we can't do it. Yeah, this, in reality, in my experience, this is the easiest model to get to fit the data. This is also reasonably easy. This is really hard to get to fit the data. 
because this idea that the factor is explained by something else is much harder to find in the data structure. Because the data structure, because people answered not sets of items, but items that were randomly distributed, mm -hmm. so this is more likely to describe that than this. Some people argue that the common factor is a method factor. And so they want to use the G by factor model to account for the method. So you have these set of items administered in one method, and then the items repeated it again, but in a different method, and the method influences. So some people talk about the general factor being a method factor. But I think it can be a conceptual factor, like the total score. All of these questions are about assessment. But these items are about this part of assessment, the second part of assessment. So, um, yeah. OK. I have two questions. On the level of test users, uh, when we use this course, is there any difference between factor and theory? And is there any effect of this factor point reliability in this case? Well, reliability is at this level and this level, right? Mm -hmm. So the reliability of the first order factor or the unique factor, it's the overall fit to the data that says actually these things are so correlated they really ought to have an ex common explanation, these items actually, the unique factor is not enough to explain them because actually all these fact items are correlated with each other, so let's capture that correlated with each other with a general factor. Uh, could you, for example, in the model, used in one, simultaneously uh, result from second order and from first order factor? Uh, could it be what was Yes. Yeah. So that's Some why. So that's yeah. why in my student conception of assessment, you would have there's a score for the second order and a score for the two first order. These two things are highly correlated, and they there's a first order, second order. So um, impact on students is another question. I'm not sure. Well, put it this way. As I said, so. Emir, that's so. As I said to Emir, teachers really like subscores. Your class is really bad at math. Well, geez, I knew that. Tell me what, where to begin. Oh, start here. They're really bad at this. Fix this. Thank you. Mommy and Daddy, so what should my sonny Jimmy, son Jimmy do first? Oh, he should do everything. Thanks, that's not very informative. Give me a beginning point. Oh, well, he should begin here. This is, this is the thing he's weakest at. Humans like much more specific guidance than, oh, you're really bad at math and you need to study everything. That's not very helpful. Yes, you're really bad at math, and the key is you need to start with some algebra. That's helpful feedback that assessment and uh, survey stuff can help people with. So we like school, we like the sub, we don't just want the general, because the general's not very informative. I'm just curious, if we do not overestimate, for example, the hierarchical model, when we uh, start uh, making computations, uh, when we, for example, we report uh, second order factor result, and after that, simultaneously also first order factor results, and we over uh, over I, I think that's, I'm not aware of people doing that. I don't think that's likely because this set hierarchical model is so much harder to prove is right. So if you're ending up with a hierarchical model, you really understand the facets of each sub-factor. So I, I I don't know, people who create hierarchical models are probably a little more careful. And uh, if the fit of this model is worse than the fit of that model, 
then you're saying, well, actually, these sub-factors exist because of some common cause. Here, there is no common cause. They just exist. And that's easy to model, but maybe harder... Well, what it doesn't tell you is, so what, if I want to change things, where do I begin? Because they just exist simultaneously. This at least starts to say, well, maybe I should work on this or this. Um, it's much more about the theory you have about the nature of the phenomenon you're studying and researching. Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah the common factor is quite separate from the unique factors in yes. the bifactor model. Yes. Can it be interpreted like social desirability, not only method factor, but something that influences everything, like all cultural specific, uh, um, well, the, the problem is, the way we interpret factors and understand factors depends on the content of the thing it's predicting. Mm -hmm. So whatever the content is here, is what we use to say, that's, that's what this is. And can, can I make an argument that the thing that explains all of this is reading ability, or math ability, or... Uh, I think that would be harder to prove, that social desirability influences everything, and that you can isolate it. Yeah, let me go on about the technique, and you can puzzle away at the substance in your view. So, in a correlated model, the question is, how many factors do you need? None, one, or many. And are the factors independent? Yes, there's a factor, but there's they're orthogonal to others. Or are they correlated? Are the factors correlated or hierarchical? Are they just, you know, influence each other, or is there a structure? Do they have a linear path from one to many to one, or one to many? There's all of these things that you should be asking yourself when you're designing a model and looking at results. Are there other legitimate ways to explain it? So, what kind of model is this? Good. And this? Intercorrelated. Correlated model. That one? Okay, that? Hierarchical correlated. Right? It's hierarchical and a correlated, a hierarchical correlated second order or second order correlated model. Right? We can begin to put these multiple words together. That? It's like four models? Sorry? It's like four separate models? Yeah. Well, it's four uncorrelated factors, four independent factors. Might as well be four analysis. Well, no, you would do it all at the same time. And you're just saying, my model says there is zero, 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 zero path amongst these things. They just exist independently of each other. Is it plausible? Is it likely? No, but okay. So it's certainly not in the same test. Sorry? Well, certainly not in the same questionnaire. But everybody who's done exploratory factor analysis with orthogonal rotation, that's what they're actually specifying. So this is the orthogonal rotation. Four orthogonally uncorrelated factors. There's no correlation there. That's what that represents. Four orthogonal factors. I don't believe in it, but it's that's what people are doing with those orthogonal rotations. Number B? Simple correlated, and C, y factor. y factor. Okay, good. So the logic is easy to see and understand. Doing it. Here's independent factors, hierarchical factors, correlated factors. Which one do you think is going to fit the data best? Correlated. Yeah. 
because you're absorbing all the variances and allowing them to exist simultaneously. Whereas here you say, you know that correlation between here and here? It's actually in here. This is harder to get approved. And if this will, will fit worse because you're actually restricting the model even more than that everything is correlated. All right? This is a study we published in Intelligence. <clears throat> One of the components in the, the article was an IQ score that we got from the agency that administered a survey of over 9,000 kids in Sweden. They didn't, re they didn't disclose the item scores. They only gave the scale scores. So here's four scale scores. Simple factor, IQ. Here's the bifactor model that says general IQ consists of crystallized IQ and fluid IQ. Did this in Mo and in Amos, when you only have two, you have to set a seed value on both paths to make a two-factor item solve when it's not correlated with another factor. Then we said, well, what if it's hierarchical? General IQ, crystallized IQ. So it looks like this model, but it says the general is in here at the factor level, not at the item level. And then what we eventually had to do was say, Oh God, I hated myself for this. We had to correlate these two because this was synonyms and this was opposites. Antonyms, synonyms and antonyms. And we have commented in the article that we did this, we didn't like doing it, but it was necessary. And the research team should develop more measures for each construct of crystallized IQ and fluid IQ. They should have a third score here and a third score here. But they're in the world of purely classical test theory. I counted how many questions you got right, that's your score. So they're not even in the world of item response theory, let alone in the world of factor analysis. But we've, crit we've made a gentle critique of the data they gave us. But I've told you don't do this, but it was the only way to capture the fact that synonyms and antonyms are highly correlated scores. Maybe we could have just summed those two scores and then had a three item factor. That might have been a better solution. But we didn't want to mess with their beautiful structure. But I think if I was doing it, if I was writing an article of how to make use of the Swedish school IQ test, I might say, this is an ugly solution, it's theoretically difficult, but these two things are correlated, so let's just sum those two scores and then have three scores and it should fit. Which one did you prefer? Sorry? Which one was the best? The... Unfortunately, this was the best. <laughs> Because these two scores are correlated. They're, they're, your ability to know the meanings of words explains why you know another word that means the same thing as this, and you know a word that means the opposite of this. That's the same skill. But they created two scores, but it's the same skill. So they should have really just given us one score, and they should have given us, or just had one score for language. Yes, sir. Um, why did you <coughs> Why did you choose to constrain the third uh, progression line and not another one? And if you chose a different line, would it change something? Sorry. S why, why did you choose the seed line the way you did in model number two? This one? No, the the one in the middle. This yeah, one. Yeah. And if you chose a different line for this for this seed the seed, line, seed value, seed value, uh, would it be would it change the anything in the analysis? I mean, especially I because you have that COVID. I can't imagine that the seed value location matters.
Now, uh, so you just chose randomly, and it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. Yeah. It's a nice little empirical question. Run it with here, there, and see what you get. I think also yeah, exactly. yesterday we had a whole thing about where you should choose the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's a recommendation that it be on the strongest one on the factor. These were all really highly correlated variables, so I don't think it matters. Um, because they sum to create the total. They always do. Uh, honestly, it was the lowest part of our interest in this paper, and so we just, okay, let's make it work. Um, but it would be interesting to actually test it again and go, well, let's move it. What Something happens? Let's move it. What happens? What? And I don't, I don't think it'll change anything, no, well. especially with only four items that are highly correlated. But if you have items that are car that load 0.8 down to 0.3, you may as well put it on one of the 0.8s. Yeah. Uh, for example, if you want to publish a paper, do you have like to prove that you tried all different models, like hierarchical, like that, or will you just stick to one and if the repeat items are okay? You okay. Don't have to explain. <laughs> uh, I would recommend you do the model testing and you tell them without boring them to death with all the results that you tested blah 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 and this model was a it, we're going to describe this model because it had the best fit and it was conceptually coherent but I think you should do it and especially you should report it in a PhD dissertation to prove that you know what you're doing so that someone else can go and you might put it the table of model comp competing model fits as a supplementary table that the weirdos and geeks like me would go and look at and the weird rest of the people go okay I trust you it's all about remember the ultimate goal is open science where people can see what you've done follow it, check it, and agree with it, rather than just, trust me, I know what I'm doing, I have a PhD. Right? We're not in that world. So, here's another set of data that I have, the teacher's conception of feedback. We ask teachers, here's a whole bunch of items about the nature and purpose and function of feedback. Which ones do you agree with and disagree with? And we designed 10 factors. We had two samples of data from Louisiana and New Zealand. The Louisiana, this, this researcher, doctoral student, wrote to us and said, I understand you're working on a blah, blah, blah. Can I have a copy of that for my thesis? We said, of course, we're happy to share. I did the analysis. She put it in her thesis, and she got a doctorate. Southeast Louisiana University, like. <laughs> so what we did, you know, like the Waikikamu Cow College of Agriculture. Uh, we did it independently on the two different groups. We did EFA and CFA, and we, then we compared the two groups. And then we reanalyzed it. And it's just so like, why are the answers so different? This is weird. We had multiple structures, many possible models, and systematically, by testing all of these different models, we ended up with a model, oh, okay, this makes sense. So one model came out of Louisiana. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven factors hierarchical. That feedback explains these seven factors. And it had marginal fit, but it worked for her doctoral dissertation. But this wasn't how we had designed the instrument. We had designed it in New Zealand for New Zealand. We had 10 factors in mind and, oh, wait a minute. So, we tested it for 10 factors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we ended up with 10 factors and two correlated higher order factors. It imposed meaning, but was it just chance? We weren't sure. So we went back to our theoretical framework of 10 factors, because this was just out of the exploratory results. We went back to it, the 10 factors, and what we found is that we could recover nine of the 10 factors.